Okay then, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be going over absolutely everything you need to know to customize the screens within your Tower Simulator 3. Um, we'll be going over how to change your ADRS, your radar, your strips, your weather, everything that you need to know um, so that you can have the perfect color scheme for it. Um, you can make them dark mode, you can make them the most obnoxious thing in the world if you really want to. Um, but yeah, we're just going to get straight on into it. Right, so as with most our tutorials in Tower Simulator 3, we start off in the main Tower Simulator 3 directory just up here. So if you don't know how to get here, just go into your Steam library, click on Tower Simulator 3, click the little cog here, manage, and then it's browse local files, and that will open up File Explorer here. We'll then head into airports. I'm going to be editing uh, Heathrow, so Echo, Golf, Lima, Lima. Um, and then we go into instruments then you probably won't have this custom folder here, so you'll just have the default one. So what you're going to want to do is copy and paste, so Control c Control v then we're going to rename that. Uh, I'm going to name it uh, Tutorial, like that. Um, and this will just be a exact copy of this. So once you've got this folder open, you're going to want to open this top folder here, the ADIRS look.csv. Um, it's possible that you won't have the .csv thing here, and um, that's just because I've got view um, show file extensions. So if I turn that off, you can see it disappears. Um, it doesn't matter if you have that disabled or enabled. Um, it's the same file. Um, so the top folder here, ADIRS look. Uh, so you open that, uh, and that will show this Excel thing here. I've just got this up to help me. So we expand each of these columns out. If you see these hashtags, you can just expand this out. It will show the whole thing. The ADRS is this screen here, and the one to the left of you with the map. So the background color um, is what you use to change the background color. So you can see that dark blue there. Um, yeah, that color there. That is what this cell here will change. Um, so this is in a RGBA form. So that's red in that bit there, uh, G there, blue there, and then the alpha um, there. So the alpha is basically what you use to change the transparency. Um, 255 is as high as it goes, so that will be completely opaque. Uh, and we'll see in some of the other folders, or and we'll see in some of the other files that it is slightly lower, um, especially when we start looking at the deep right. Um, so when you want to edit this, I'd recommend just Googling RGB color picker, uh, and that allows you to go here. Um, copy and paste this number here. Um, so if we want to change the background color of this to this pink, to this purple here, we can copy and paste this RGB number here, Control C, um, and then go in this cell here, replace it all there, and then you see that this only has three numbers. This doesn't have the alpha column, so we'll just put a comma and then two five five, and then I'd say get rid of the um, spaces there as well, just to be safe. Uh, and now the background here will be this sort of purpley pink color that we selected earlier. Rotation, that just changes which way the map's rotated um, to match the direction that you are looking through when you sit in the tower. Road area color, now this is completely useless, I've tried it, um, and it doesn't matter at all. Um, so by default it'll be set to a some random color, uh, and zero for the thickness, I'd recommend leaving it like that, it really doesn't do anything at all. Taxiway color, um, we can see that the taxiways here are just different colors to the background, um, so you change that to whatever color you want them to be. Um, and then this will change the width. I like to have the width quite high on my personal one. Um, I'll show you when we get towards the end of the video, um, but I have them very, very wide. Runway thickness you can change as well. So I, we can just about make out the runway at the bottom of this picture. Um, so that will change the thickness above that. That I missed is the color. You can change that as well. One possibility is that terminal color will be, if you zoom in really far on the map, it'll show the name of each terminal. Um, so it could be the name, the color that that name's, name appears in. Um, and then road text background color, think could be that color there, um, although I might be wrong. Uh, and then road text color, that's just white, so we can see that in here it is white, so I think that could be what it means. Um, and then we can change the size of the text there, and then the distance there, so presumably distance would be how zoomed in you have to be to make each of them appear. Um, road selected color, um, again, at least that is nothing because you're not selecting it. Then when we go to root color, so you would have seen in the game uh, when you give a aircraft its root, it'll put a sort of root drawn onto the map, um, so that just changes what colour that will be. Then we go onto root thickness, that again just changes the thickness of the line that it draws. Eye colour, that is if you see here the triangle that moves when you look around to show which direction you're looking at relative to the map. The width there, I like to have that defaulted to zero just so it's completely invisible. Um, and then you can also change the length of those lines there. Airplane size, you can change the size of each airplane and then the size of the text above it. Airplane colour, you can change the colour of the icon um, and then a separate colour for arriving aircraft there versus departing aircraft. You can have the um, call sign a different color, but you can see by default these are the same color. I'd recommend keeping them the same. Um, you can have the same for a departure. Um, and then each selected aircraft will um, become a different color as well. Um, so when you're saying its name or if you click on it on the map, it will turn a different color. 
And then again, you can have that different color for arriving and departure, departing. Uh, same with the call sign. And that brings us to the end of the ADRS file. Uh, so you can just save that there and then close it. Uh, if you ever get a black screen here, um, once you've loaded in, make sure that you have all of these spreadsheets closed because that can cause a conflict that means the game can't open the file. So just make sure that's closed and that should go away. Then we go into the dbright. Again, you'll have the hashtags, so you make the column slightly wider. So the background color, again, fairly self-explanatory, is just this background color here. The ring color is the color of these rings that go around. Um, ring thickness, again, the thickness of the rings, um, depends how thick you want them. Um, ILS color, um, so when you select a runway on the weather one here, you can see in the screenshot I didn't have one selected, but it'll draw a dotted line along here. Uh, usually it's in red. Um, or sort of a sort of red. So you can change what color that is. You can change how thick it is if you want. Uh, the airport color, so that is the yellow of this. So the taxiway map pretty much. The airport thickness is the thickness of those lines. The airport runway color is the red we can see here um, where the runways are. And then you can change the um, thickness there. Airplane size is the default size of the aircraft when they appear on the screen. You can change that within the game, but this just changes what it defaults to. You can have the different aircraft colors for arriving and departing, the same as in the previous one. Same with the call sign. Um, Again, this in this one, they are a different color to the icon, so that's worth noting. And then the info, as far as I'm aware, is the speed and altitude that's displayed on the screen. And then there's a different one for arriving and departing aircraft. Airplane color out of control is a color that the airplane will turn when you hand it off to departure. Airplane selected, a different color again, and it'll be for arrival and departure separate. Uh, same with the call sign and the info when it's selected. Airplane marker type, I'd recommend not changing that. The area, I'd recommend leaving that as well um, because it could change the zooming or the positioning of the map and that could just be quite annoying. Um, so leave that as it is. And then once you've made all your changes here, again, using the RGB color picker here and then making sure that you've got the RGB um, alpha uh, column on there, you can see that the alpha here is 150 in instead of 255. So these will be slightly um, translucent. So yeah, save that and then close it. I didn't make any changes, so I don't need to save it. And then moving on to strip look is this screen here. Um, so we're going to start off by just opening these columns as wide as we can. So once you've got the columns out, um, you can also change the rows because there's quite a lot more information in here as well. So I'm just going to expand that out as much as I can. And then the same for the colors. Um, so we can see that um, the tower arrived pending is the same as here. I know the screenshot's not the best quality, um, but that is the uh, header here. So whatever you change that to is whatever that text will be there. The type, I'd recommend leaving that as it is. Header background is this background color here behind the text. Um, background color is the background of this cell here. And then when we scroll down here, we'll see that that's the same as the default background color. So this will overwrite that default background color. The text color is the color of the header. Um, so that should probably be header color, but unfortunately it's not. Um, so that just changes the color of the header. Size, so each one of these takes up 50% of the height of the screen. And then notice that the size in this cell adds with the size here to make 100%, so it's sort of a ratio. Then next, that just says which cell it'll go into next. So arrival 09 right slash 27 left is this cell here. So when you press the go button, which is just here, um, if it was in this cell here, it would take it to this cell here. And then at the top here, we have the width. Um, so these four add to 100%. Um, so this is the ratio here. Um, so you can see that's slightly wider than that one, 27% um, versus 22%, so 27 there and 22 there. Uh, and then when you open the bin, which is in this column here, um, you can see that the size here is 100%, so it'll take up the full screen vertically. And then the width is 15%, so it just appears on the side, and not taking up the whole screen. And when we scroll down to colors, there's even more that you can edit. So background color, as we said before, I think is just the default um, for the backgrounds here. Background arrival. Um, is the color for the strips. Um, so it's that background color there. So this is departing aircraft here, but um, if they were up here, they would be a different color, which is 2191152133. And all of these colors here um, don't have an alpha now, so you don't need that fourth number. Background for departing aircraft would be this color here. Background GA arrival is, as far as I'm aware, background um, general aviation. Um, I think cargo is included in that. It might not be. So they can just have a different color. You can see in the default one, it's the same color. Um, text background um, for arriving aircraft, you can see that's the same as just the regular arriving color. Um, so I assume that's just sort of a highlight for over the text. Um, I'd recommend leaving that the same as the background color. And then again, you have different for GA and departing aircraft. And then the text generally, not the background, the text for arriving departing general aviation aircraft is set to 000. Um, and you can see the text here is black. Grid color is, you see these lines here. It's just the color of those lines. Uh, that go along the cells. So you can make that a different color if you want. Once you've made all the changes here, once again, save and close. Make sure it's closed before you try and launch the game. Uh, I didn't make any changes, so I don't have to save. 
And when we go into the weather file, um, that is yet another file to edit. Um, so this is this window here. And once more, you want to expand out the columns so that you can see all of the information. Background color is just the um, color of this screen here. So the background here. Um, header background color is the color of these lines here. Um, header element color is the background color for this um, meta and wind information. Um, you can see that's the same as the regular background color, um, but you can change that if you want. Uh, header text color is the color of the text in here for the ATIS and the um, wind information. Uh, header airport background color, you can see in this file it's the same as the regular header background color for the airport, but you could make that a different one just to show the ICAO. Uh, and then you can change the text color for the ICAO. Um, runway color is the color of these bits here and the darker bit here. Runway button color, as far as I'm aware, doesn't appear um, here, so you can fiddle around with that as you please. Um, I don't think it will do anything, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, runway button text color, I would assume, is the color of the um, runway names here. Um, button disable color is the color that these are here. Um, so the dark buttons here that show which aircraft um, can land on which type of runway um, is that color. And then when it's enabled, it'll turn into a slightly lighter color. Scale, I would assume, is the width here, um, but I'd recommend leaving that alone. So we've now edited all the files in the database, so you can go ahead and test it. So when we get to the select screen um, to load into the game, make sure that you select airport radar style, and then what have you changed the name to? So I had it as tutorial, so make sure it's set to that, and then it'll just start in as normal. With a little bit of tweaking, this is eventually what I've come to settle on. Um, so I've set the background here to black, and I've set this to a sort of dark mode kind of thing. One thing that I don't like so much about this is the color of these. It tends to clash a bit and it's not so readable. Um, so if we select this one, we can see the green. It's hard to read against the color of the taxiway. Um, so I will have to change that at some point. You might also notice that the width of the taxiways is quite different to in the default map. Um, so I did thicken that a bit and make it a lot closer to the runway here. Okay then. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it very helpful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, it always means a lot and helps out the channel. And if there's anything you'd like me to go over, explain in a little bit more detail, then be sure to mention it in the comments, I'd love to. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you'll like this video on the end screen now, where we go over how to make your own custom schedules for Tower Simulator 3.